Welcome to EMS Office Hours. This is Jim Hoffman. These are your Monday Minutes. And guys, listen, I know it's been a couple of weeks and I've done one of these. I have been super busy working on a new resource, the EMS Blueprint. On top of that, I've had a couple of graduations, high school, college graduations, celebrities and ceremonies and stuff to go to, so I've been a little lacking. But we're back, and I hope we'll keep us on track, back to the weekly publishing. And today, guys, we are going to be continuing on with trauma, and we're going to talk about hemorrhage and shock today, keeping it very basic. But stuff you will see on exams, and that's why this stuff is important. And I always like to tell you, why is it important? Well, it's not just for the exam. Sure, like I just said, it's going to be information in these videos, like I say every week, that's important and key to passing the test. But it's going to help you make better clinical decisions, write better reports, Build your knowledge base, move your knowledge needle, and make you a better EMS professional. So we talk about hemorrhage and and stuff like that, okay? Um, I want to talk about a few things when it comes to blood and shock and stuff like that. It's going to kind of tie it all together as we go further on into the uh, uh, trauma videos here, okay? So we talk about perfusion. This is that process, okay? It, oxygenated blood, it gets delivered to the body tissues, and then the waste inside the body tissues are removed. Diffusion, or diffusion, or diffusion, this is the movement of particles from an area of greater concentration, to an area of lesser concentration. Now, remember what I just said, diffusion greater to lesser. Pretty much, there's gonna be a question on some exam you will take as an EMS provider, whether it is now or in the future, where a question about what the hell diffusion is will come up. And that is five points that I just gave you. Right, greater, to lesser. Remember that. Now, I put FIC principle down here because this is another thing you'll see a lot on exams. Okay? This is the quantity of oxygen that gets delivered to the body organ and it's equal to the amount of oxygen that's consumed by the organ plus the amount that gets carried away. Okay, it's about the giving the organ cells, right? You're, you're feeding the cells, okay? Now, there's actually four components, right? Four, four vital components that you need to get oxygen to the cell. So I want to just go over that. The first one is inspiration of adequate oxygen. Right, where you have no blockage in the airways, right? It's adequate. You're getting great inspiration of oxygen in, in room air, okay, and no blockage in the airways. Then you get the onloading of that oxygen to the red blood cells at the lung, the area of the lungs, and that you get adequate numbers of those red blood cells and a good capillary alveoli contact okay now track with me here guys now the next one is delivery of those red blood cells to the tissues so that's when you need an adequate pump right the heart and stuff and adequate fluid the amount of blood to flow all right so you see what's happening here right this is how it's all ties into the shock and the hemorrhage stuff, right? If you're not getting these red blood cells circulating and you're not getting them inoxygenated and they're not getting delivered, then we start having problems. 
Now, finally, the fourth section here of those four components that are necessary to get oxygen is the offloading of that oxygen from those red blood cells that we talked about in the last couple here, the other, the other components, offloading of that oxygen to the tissue cells. So then again, you've got good capillary contact. And then that, of course, regulates all that good, everything going on in the tissues, including the pH and including temperature, right? Again, things that will affect the patient and whether or not they have adequate circulation, enough blood circulating, and preventing the shock. Now, Talking about things like the cardiovascular system, you see things like stroke volume or volume. And again, something you will see often on exams, right? And stroke volume is that amount of blood pumped into the cardiovascular system in one heart beat, one contraction. Usually it's around 70 milliliters, around there, okay, as average. But what does that amount depend on? Contractility, right, that extent or the velocity of muscle, uh, that fiber shortening, right? That, what's that extent, okay, of, of the contractility? Preload. That's sort of that's a passive stretching, right? The passive stretching force on the ventricle at the end of diastole. Okay, so more blood that returns from the body into the heart, okay, is going to increase that preload, and of course, less blood returning is going to decrease it. Okay. Now, if the container, the body, the you know the vessel itself is bigger than the amount of fluid, like you're losing blood, you're going to have an inadequate preload and a decrease in cardiac output. Now, of course, drugs can do this, heart cardiac conditions can do this, but we're talking particularly here about hemorrhage and shock. Okay? Now, afterload is the pressure that the ventricle muscle has to generate to overcome higher pressure that is found in the aorta to go ahead and eject the blood out, okay? To get it out, eventually to eject that blood out, okay? So this is, that's a basic, in a nutshell, the cardiovascular system, okay? A lot more stuff, as you can see in the picture here, right? All the being the cover and veins and arteries and all that good stuff, right? But in a nutshell, for what we're trying to get across here for stroke volume and how that all works, think about the contractility, preload, and afterload. Guys, if it's not making sense, again, I don't want to make this an hour presentation. I'm trying to give you the highlights here because I, you know, this is stuff you're going to see often on exam. So about, you're going to see preload on exam. You're going to see afterload on exam. Stroke volume. You're going to see. Uh, Fick principle, diffusion, you know, all you're going to see the stuff on tests. So if it's not clicking for you, go get your textbook, your study guide, look this up, and study it. Okay? Um, or you can use my TurboMedic. TurboMedic.com, of course, there's lots of resources there as well to help you study and master these topics and keep moving your knowledge needle or mastering the knowledge that you have. So finally, guys, I want to just talk a little bit about a couple of key things here. All right, blood pressure and stuff like that. Okay, just to kind of bring it home for today's uh, video. Blood pressure is very important. You're going to see questions about this on test, what it is, right? And I've seen on test, I'm telling you, 
when I, I was taking exams early on in the EMS, they would always ask me what blood pressure was, and I could never remember it. All right, I would get done with the test, and I'd be like, what the hell was blood pressure? I don't understand how I don't get that question right. It's the force that blood exerts against the walls of the arteries as it passes. That's what blood pressure is in a nutshell. Okay? The force that blood exerts against the walls of the arteries as it passes. Cardiac output. This is the amount of blood that gets pumped each minute, right? So it's the rate times the stroke volume, which is the stroke volume is what? That's the, uh, the amount in one heartbeat, right? So your heart rate times the stroke value. That's your cardiac output. Again, you'll see this shit on exams. Cardiovascular system, we talked about already, but this is just kind of kind of bringing up a little bit more here. This is a system that's closed. So when you increase cardiac output or you increase vascular resistance because of hemorrhage, because of shock going on in the body, right? A lot of times it's going to increase the blood pressure, especially initially, right? But when that starts to decrease, when the cardiac output and the vascular resistance starts to decrease, then the blood pressure is going to drop. Okay, the blood pressure depends on these things just as much as the entire body does to keep things going, right? And finally, I just want to touch on blood vessels, guys, because you might see little questions about this and it's it's good to kind of keep this in the back of your mind because it, it it'll help you tie in all the stuff that we talk about when we talk about trauma and stuff even beyond that right we talk about how drugs work and and uh cardiac issues and stuff right of course you know that it's a closed system okay and this is when you call it, that's when you call it the vessel right or the container but the blood vessels are elastic and they always adjust. They're, they're always kind of adjusting the diameter, right? Depending on what's going on in the body, right? We, they respond to the needs of local tissue, all right? What does that mean? That means they bypass less important stuff. When stuff is going on, the patient's going into shock, right? That's, you know, they, they okay, the, the arms don't need me right now. The heart needs me, the lung needs me, right? The vital organs need me. So bypass less important tissues for the vital signs to keep vital organs and, and systems going, right? And then the sympathetic nervous system, guys, this is what is going to start activating the, the dilation and the contraction of the blood vessels. Okay, guys, I, I know this is a lot of information in a very, very short video. Most of you have probably already had extensive lectures on this stuff. So I'm hoping that this is just a reminder that looking at this before your test, okay, or maybe you're struggling with this area a little bit, so you're trying to kind of just hammer it home by doing a little bit more, okay? Um, and that is what I'm here for, to give you augmented content and resources and information that your instructor might be either missing or that you're not getting it. Sometimes you need it presented a different way, right? And that's how it ends up sticking. Listen, when I was in paramedic school, I was lost when it came to uh, EKGs. When we got to that cardiology section, that of course the most one of the most important parts of being a paramedic. I was lost. I was ready to quit. And back then there was no Google, so I took my butt to the library and I looked at other books on cardiology and EKGs until I found one that helped me have it all click in my head. And once it did. The rest of it was so much easier. I felt like a dummy for not getting it. But once I got it, 
everything else clicked. All right, guys, that's it for today. Listen, please engage with me. Okay, check me out on Twitter or Instagram. I'm at EMSA from both of those. Instagram is sort of like the uh, my little reality show, right? It's different than what you're going to see on Twitter, which is more of the newsy type thing. And then, of course, Facebook is the EMS professional on Facebook. And on Facebook is sort of like my, uh, that's like my TV show, right? Sometimes they're intertwined, sometimes they're totally separate. But I hope you engaged me at least on one, if not all, of these channels. So go check me out on Instagram, guys. Follow me there. Um, and you'll see my stories and the Instagram Live and Instagram TV and all that good stuff there. So go check me out there. Um, you can actually just, if you want to, if you, you have Instagram, you can uh, get me at, at EMS Safe, or you can just go to the special link I have at emsseo.com forward slash Instagram. That will direct you um, right to the page, right to my, my Instagram page, so you can follow. All right, guys, let me end it there. Oh, one more thing. Don't forget to check out Terra Medic, guys. If you like this type of stuff, you want to move your knowledge needle, you want to increase your, your knowledge, you want to be a better provider and be more confident out in the field, you're taking tests, go check it out, guys. I've got a trial membership. It's at emsseo.com forward slash turbo. You can get all the information there. I hope you join me. I hope I see you in the members area there. Um, and that's it, guys. As always, I am Jim Hoffman. Be sure to send me your minutes if you have something you want to talk about here on the show. Here's my email right below at contact at emsofficehours.com. Thanks for watching the Monday Minutes. And as always, guys, stay safe.